Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. If you build it, he will. It's the Skinny on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. I throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. And a good Paul Jones Drug Tuesday out there. Western Oklahoma, welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM. The Sports Animal, glad to have you along for the next hour as we get into all kinds of different stuff. The Stanley Cup playoffs are... Have reached the finals. Women's College World Series is set. College baseball regionals have been announced. Oklahoma State will host. Oklahoma did squeeze in and heads to a familiar state, at least, over the past decade or so. Uh, And then what happened last night? Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals with Boston going out with a whimper. And it was a bad omen on the very first play of the game. Don't act like that didn't matter, Jared. Now, is it the reason they lost? Probably not. But it would help to have your superstar completely healthy for the entire game. Uh, but it was shocking. I, I was, it was shocking to see Boston come all the way back to there and, and then just nothing in the second half of that game last night. We'll, re, we'll talk about that. Look forward to the NBA Finals. Also see how Jared's weekend was as well. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. 225 225- 9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things or whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime in at 225 9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, stay in touch with the show a couple of ways. Log on to kadsam.com or you can download the app. The app is free, it's got it all. Radio, Penny News, Big Elk and Paragon TV. And then, of course, the Skinny on Sports podcast is available everywhere you can find podcasts, including kadsam. Dot com. Good morning, Jared. How are you? How was your weekend? It was eventful. How was yours? How'd the Crushers do? I'm anxious to hear. Did they play yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. How'd they do? I saw they got the Not good C. yesterday. Oh, dear. Uh, it was one of those games, right? Like, Oh, yeah. It was one to nothing. Like, when it was when in the first four innings, when we hit it and hit it hard, it was right at them. They had kind of a seeing eye hit here and there, mm-hmm. you know, some... A base running mistake on our part here and there. And next thing you know, it's two to nothing. Still in reach. So top of the fourth, they get bases loaded, nobody out, up two nothing. We wiggle off the hook. Don't give up a run. And I'm thinking, all right, here we go. We get basically a bunt single to start, back to the top of the lineup, and it just didn't happen. Ah, darn it. And then the, the, and then the team, we're playing a team from Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. And then they scored six runs in the fifth. The, the dam broke. I mean, it was almost like... You're holding your finger in the dam. And you're hoping, like, okay, let's have a long inning here, and maybe we can just, you know, the, right. the time goes out. Right. And it didn't happen, and uh. then they scored a bunch of runs. Ended up getting beat. But, no, overall, 4-1, and one, uh, played some good teams. Good showing, yeah. Beat some good teams. Matter of fact, uh, on Saturday, came back from a three-run deficit in the last half inning to beat the team that won it. So, that's uh, it was a good week. It just kind of a disappointing into it yesterday but all in all i think it was a good week um on saturday no 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 sunday was it sunday yes sunday evening so we got delayed because of the rain and then actually moved from mustang which is a softball fields and then Uh kind of baseball sort of baseball fields. yeah i was there just a few weeks ago yeah okay uh to but because of the rain got moved to midwest city wow wow over by carl albert okay place is nice and it was turf that's why they did there it. you go the games were ending and so they kind of stacked we were down in, in the division the whites team was in the crushers 
down to just two games left for the whole pool play. All I think there was five pools, maybe. Mm-hmm. And so we went over there. Well, it's so nice how that works out. It was nice. Well, they were able we're, to allow to move the tournament to a different town that has turf. That's, that's nice right. how that works out. It was, I hope uh, other notable towns around here are taking note of that. It was um, more like home. That's what all the kids wrote. Hey, this is just like home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. We had the opposite effect. We went to an all-natural dirt and grass field, and uh, it was – my kid got the pitch, and she was kind of doing something illegal. She was coming off the rubber, mm-hmm. then pitching. And I said, hey, uh, gotta keep your foot on there. She goes, well, it's hard. There's a hole here. It's not like at home. I said, well, kick dirt and fill in the yeah. hole. And, and, and anyways. But, yeah, it's it's nice when you can play on a place like at home. So you made they, you made it through at Duncan? No, we got two games in and it rained. And then it out. rained. Well, yeah. that's, I, I was wondering. Yeah, we got one game in against a really good Moreland team. We gave kind of like that. We had one bad inning. We lost four to one. Gave up four runs in one inning. And, um, then it was a stalemate, able to chip away at it with one run. And we basically had runners on, and we knew we're out of time here. We got to do it now. Right. And we we couldn't get it done. And came out, won the second game 12 to nothing uh, over a team from Comanche, I believe. And I mean, just it always takes these girls, I've noticed it since all the way, way back in T ball days, it always takes them the second game to really get going. You know? So played that Moreland team. I, I thought that. If uh, they're able, if our girls were able to come back through the losers bracket, probably would see them again in the championship mm-hmm. game. But I got rained out, just got done with the second game. We went to our little camp area with all the cars and tents and stuff, and then it suddenly, boom, mm-hmm. wind hit, temperature dropped. We're like, rain's here, so we broke it down, got in the cars, we sat there for about thirty minutes, and this and not the text said canceled. Yeah, go home. So quick uh, one day trip down to Duncan and back and. Yesterday, um, no, that was sun- yeah, that was Sunday. So yesterday, just did a lot of stuff around the house. I actually went out to the Fiveplex baseball side, watched a game. I promised a guy I'd go watch him play, and got that done. Went over there and watched them get a big win, and um, that's about it. I got a lot done yesterday. I mowed the lawn again. Might have to mow again tomorrow. <laughs> as yeah. fast as it's growing. Yeah, so. better get it done by the weekend. Well, I know what everyone's thinking. What'd you eat? Did you? Did you? Oh, Saturday. Uh, Saturday had nothing to do. I saw your mom, by the way. Went over to Clinton, checked out that new store over there. She was there? Nope. She was at the restaurant we went to, at, at a Mexican restaurant hmm. over there. Oh, with her brothers and sister. Okay. Brother and sister. Yeah. They went to uh, go visit graves and stuff. Cool. Yeah. So we um, yeah, ran into her and checked out that new store over there that they just opened up. We had nothing going on Saturday. Came home in time to watch OU softball. And how's that? So, so again, what did you eat? What did you make? That's why I didn't make anything. You didn't it's do, gone all you're, weekend. You didn't have a chance to do anything. No. Even the day, nothing, nada. No, we were gone. Zip, zilch. We left Saturday morning and got back last night. Wow. Because it was two games Saturday, two games Sunday. Was there anything good in the concession stands? At least I never even went to the concession oh, stand. I literally never went. Um, that's some my willpower wife, right there. Well, my <laughs> wife is really good about having a couple of, like, she has a little backpack that'll yeah. have some water and Gatorade for Wyatt and hopefully one a water or two for me. And it normally does, almost always does. And then she is also, I'm sure, I, I know every team has this, right? Like the snack mom. Of course. She's the snack mom for the little, you know, there's always little siblings hanging out. For suckers oh, and yeah, yeah. mints or whatever. There's always probably some Chex Mix. There's always a beef stick or two or some jerky yep. or something like that. Yep. And so there's always just a little bit if you if you get hungry. But the, the deal was, I mean, we were back-to-back, so it wasn't like there was long, like a, a game delay sure. where you go, okay, let's go get a, something from the concession stand. <clears throat> we just kind of played and left. And so, uh, yeah, it was good. Oh, four racks of baby back ribs right here. Y'all missed out. Mm. Yeah, Allie does that. She she brings sandwich stuff and she'll make them on those mm-hmm. Hawaiian rolls, like little slider sandwiches. Yes. If we have, you know, like a break, a, a break, like yeah. a game. Yeah, we've done that in the past too. Like if you know, it's not enough time really to leave, but you also kind of need to refuel. Bring some sandwich yeah. stuff. Everybody yeah. have a sandwich and hang out in the park. She's going to bring those beef sticks and the cheese sticks. Sometimes I'll grab those two at a time and even at the same mm-hmm. time, you know, 
But yeah, you know what I saw um, at Walmart the other day? Very tempting. A little 17 inch Blackstone tailgate griddle. Just a hundred bucks. You just set it on your tailgate. I was very tempted. But I didn't do it. Now it's like, it's the last thing you need. You would never use it. Anyways. Make some, Good idea. Make some at the ballpark. But we don't have, I've noticed the tournament sweep. Even if we came up through the losers bracket, the longer we, the longest we set is just a one game. You know, we just it yeah, was, was it's thinking, not like two games in between. It's I was it, thinking of that better for, for like the hotel on a weekend deal. If or yeah, if you're if it's an overnight, mm-hmm. that's a good idea. Can have that there. Yeah, to, I did buy a tent. You know, that's become very useful. Just to stay out of the sun. Yeah, throw up that tent. And I and I, well, we had it out behind left field where we parked, and you could pull up and park, and a bunch of people pull up their cars, backed it up, had the tent there, and I strapped it to the uh, to the fence yeah. itself, mm-hmm. and and laid down some blankets, and mainly just to get those girls out of the sun, out you the know. Sun, yeah. And now I mean, this weather's so great. You get out of the sun and get a little bit of breeze. It feels great. It's not like a hot breeze. Yeah. But that ten, I, and the, you I know, recommend one of those if you where y'all are, where you're at is a lot different than where I'm at as far as the structure of things. Well, a little more, yeah. Because for one, you could probably after losing the first game, how many games could you have played? Five. We would have to play <clears throat> five more games to win the whole thing. To win the whole thing. Yeah. See, there's no chance we're playing five baseball games in a day. Zero, zip, zilch, nada at this point in life. Because of just the pitching rules, they're not they're not set up to do that. Right. Like three is the most absolute, the most that we'll ever play. Yeah. Um. In in a, in a single day, that's just the way it goes. So the the days might be the same length though, because the game is long. It feels like what's your hour? What's your time limit? About sixty minutes. See, it's hour it's and six. A, it's sixty. Hours an hour and a half. So that you know, if you I guess there you go, you'd be thirty minutes longer with five games than. We would have three, but anyhow, it was a good weekend. Everyone, it was it was good. I felt a lot better about leaving that uh, that U Triple S A tournament there yesterday than we did, you know, the first one down at Ardmore, where it was pretty rough uh, for the Crusher. So good, good times, good times were had by all. Uh, we ate some decent food as far as restaurants and stuff. Yeah, um, but it, that we were going to go to. A popular place on Sunday because it was like we had like twelve fifteen and a two o'clock game. Well, the two o'clock game ended up being a seven o'clock game, which nope. didn't start till eight o'clock, which didn't get out of there till midnight or until midnight till ten. Woo. <coughs> Whoa! What was that noise? A little wheezy over there. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting sick on goodness there, gracious. So anyhow, yeah, good weekend. Uh, it sounds like for all. All right, last night. The Boston Celtics fought all the way back to 3-3, three to three, had Game 7 at home, and then the very first play, Jason Tatum rolls his ankle up, and then Boston goes out with a whimper in a Game 7 loss at home, 103-84. It's now 0-151 and all-time. Teams falling behind three games to none. Boston was just the fourth team to force a Game 7. And I'll be honest with you, after the way that Game 6 ended in heartbreaking fashion for the Heat, thinking they had the thing won and then learning that they didn't, that was a monumental turnaround in my mind for them to be able to get back focused, get ready to go to Boston, which is a place that is historically damn near impossible to win a Game 7 at as the road team, and to come out and just dominate that game. It it never really felt like the Heat weren't going to win. You know, Boston got out to what a nine four start or something like that, even though Tatum rolled his ankle. But Miami, I think, in the, at the end of the day, Miami is nowhere near as talented as Boston. I still don't believe that. But Miami's tougher than Boston, hmm. and I think that was the difference in that game last night before it ever even started. The mindset of the Miami Heat versus the mindset of the Boston Celtics was the difference and you just had you could see those guys the dog came out in them and Miami is uh, a worthy Eastern Conference champion even though I don't think the best team is going on to play Denver 
I agree with that. I agree with that. But the toughest team is, mm-hmm. and and that is interesting for me, is that toughness versus Denver. But we'll we'll get to that uh, later on in the week uh, before that one starts. But uh, man, I I really wish our listeners were had a uh, an exclusive look at our text conversation at the end of Game Six on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm sitting, I'm standing in the kitchen, kind of hanging out, watching it, and I'm thinking, all right, I'll start talking trash. <laughs> then that happened. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, and my, my kids, what's wrong? I said, I talked trash too early <laughs> <laughs> to you. As we kind of, we, we ate about the time that game was getting tipped off on Saturday. We were in the restaurant, we ate, and then we got back, kind of scrambling around a little bit to, to, to figure out where everybody was, what's going on, is everybody back, da-da-da. Then we, of course, sat outside and, and visit at, at, around the adult circle and kind of forgot about it there for a little bit. And then somebody said, oh, who's winning that basketball game? So I looked, and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's about over. Miami's ahead by a point with like three seconds left. And then you then it start getting texts from you, I was like, and I'm like, dang it. And then my app says Miami wins. And then about the jury was sitting right next to me. He goes, man, mine says my uh, Boston won. It's like, what? And so then I looked mine back up and it had changed. And, I, and so then at that point we're like, what, texting like, what happened? Who won the game? We don't even know because we're outside <laughs> away from the TV. And then of course we, everybody started pulling up their phones, finding the replay of the last play, you know, and oh, is it good? You know, yep. like, oh, that's easily good. Yeah. They, oh, Boston easy, won yeah. this game. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was pretty – I was trying to – as a matter of fact, I did bait you in last night to attempting to jinx it. You tempted the basketball gods, but it also – Well, I wasn't going to say anything. Well, a little night. bit. I mean, I, I at least got you to, to kind of respond. Well, the, when I looked at the score – Well, yeah, it was a 17-point lead with eight minutes to go. It yeah. was going to be hard to, for that to turn around. Yeah. But when it, when they were up on game six, up a point with, what, three point something, two point something seconds left, I was, there's no way, there's no way. So I started telling you what kind of burritos I liked, and then that happened. And it was funny because I was, I was actually, like I said, I was in the kitchen, I was kind of doing some things, listening to music, and I had the TV on mute, which is kind of fun for me to watch because I can kind of just soak mm-hmm. in how I, not not let the, the play-by-play guys tell us how we should think about a game, but just watch it and think about a game does that make sense mm-hmm. but uh <laughs> when that happened not only did you like hold up wait wait it says boston won in my phone it didn't immediately whoa hey oh my goodness did you see that yeah. lol wow i'm like man what a day first <laughs> OU, you yeah. and then this what a crazy day so Back kind of to the to an idea of the heat toughness. Did you yeah. see that story yesterday? No. Uh, about mid afternoon, on Twitter, it started kind of getting out there that Miami had booked the flight. Oh yeah. To Denver. I saw it after the game, and I not back. I, I after- saw it kind of mid afternoon, and I was wondering if it was a bunch of Celtics reporters trying, trying to to, yeah. to stir it up and get some sort of motivation for the hometown team. But I, I just think that that speaks to their toughness, their confidence. In that, even after blowing the three nothing lead to get back to a game seven, they still had all the confidence in the world. And the headline on ESPN says uh, Miami won game seven. Uh, started thinking about winning game seven as soon as game six was over. They didn't dwell on what happened there at the end, and, and you know, just a, a simple box out would have would have paved their way to the finals in six games instead of seven. But uh, incredible performance, I thought, by Miami. Well, really showed the toughness that they're known for. Well, on that note of toughness, you know, they went up three to nothing, and they, I think that going up three nothing carried over for them when they thought, listen, we beat them three times in a row. Yeah, we've dropped here. We can beat them again. It's and that's a mental thing. It's a mental toughness thing. Yeah, that's you, a big part of it too, I think. It's you like, win three yeah, games, but then there's yes, there is that pressure of man, we don't want to be the team that blows this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think, they, but and then gives Bolster a lot of credit because you know with the booking of the flights or whatever, if that's true or not, and and uh, but him sustaining the course, you know, and just like, guys, and I think that was a big part of it. So we beat him three in a row. We're fine. 
Okay, we'll, we'll make adjustments. We should have had game six. That took a lucky bounce. It was literally what it was. It was a lucky bounce off that missed shot. Just to go right there. If it had bounced any other way, that nah, if over. it had bounced the other way, Jason Tatum would have dunked it because he was on the other side of the rim. <laughs> Miami did a horrible so job of blocking out. Yeah, I mean, that was ridiculous how you can leave two guys for a putback like that. Yeah. But no, it was um, – I thought yeah, last night, <coughs> and, and we talked about this the entire series, whoever made, sh- whoever made threes was going to win. And that stayed true through all but game six. As you look back at game one, Miami shot 52% from three, Boston 34. Game two, it's 35 to 28 in Miami's favor. 54 to 26 Miami in game three. Then 40 to 25 for Boston, 41 39 for Boston. Game six is the outlier. Boston only shot 20% uh, from three, while Miami shot 47, and Boston was able to win that game. And then last night it was 50 to 21. That game six outlier is pretty interesting uh, in the Celtics season as well as uh, last night was the seventh game in the entire season in which Boston shot worse than 26% from three. And game six is the only one of those they won. One in six in those seven games. So it really kind of probably does drive home the point that Miami should have won game six. And Boston was able to find a way to to do that. But uh, kudos to the Heat. I mean, think about think about the, the what's left in the wake of LeBron. When LeBron leaves somewhere, what is left usually? Basically, and and you know, a decade of futility. This is now the second time in four years that the or second time, <clears throat> yeah, and that they're going to play twenty twenty, and now here right here in twenty twenty three, just a few years after LeBron left. So, you know, whether it's Pat Riley. Whether it's Spo, or whether it's whoever down there, I think Riley should get a lion's share of the credit as far as building the team and building it in a way that nobody else is doing. Nobody, yeah, is doing what he's doing as far as the the idea, and it's not. In, they've proven that they can kind of do it multiple ways. You know, obviously with the with the big three of LeBron and Bosh and Wade, <clears throat> you know, Wade and, and Shaq. And then now this kind of mismatch of guys that are more about the team than they are <clears throat> than they are them, and the guy that's closest to being a star feels like a, a total team player as well in, in Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Did, did you know this is just the third or the fourth? This will be the fourth NBA Finals where each team just has one All Star. I did not know that. Isn't that incredible? I love that. It goes back to what we were talking about, the end of the big three, the end of the super team era. I mean, is this it? Could that, is, this, is this finals flying the flag for that? These are team teams and not super teams. Just, you know, you got obviously your one superstar on each side, but nice complimentary pieces around Yeah, and guess them. what? But here's the deal. Miami's all-star is not Jimmy Butler. It wasn't trying to think who it was it was bam out of bio oh that's right <clears throat> that's what's crazy about yeah. this and of course murray would probably be an all-star a lot of years but coming off the knee injury he's wasn't quite there yet until it got into the playoffs but yeah that i mean as much as you as the basketball purist like you're talking about wants to likes this and it's you know more back to the kind of 90s model of of team building Instead of what what became of the the mid to late two thousands into the twenty ten, yeah, I don't think it's going to work out for the TV people. That's true. I was kind of looking back. Okay, when what, what's the last series that one would think the TV execs would hate worse than this one? I went all the way, I went back about twenty years and found two, and they involved the same team. The San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs and the New Jersey Nets in 03. The Spurs in Detroit in 2005. And I wanted to put Spurs Cleveland in 2007, but I had a hard hard time doing that because that was LeBron's coming out party. Right. 
Any others that you can think of where you, the TV people are going, oh, my God. Like that had happened? What just happened? We thought we were going to get this. I mean, cause, do you remember, like, back in those early 2000s, people were I'm horrible at, openly rooting yeah. against the Spurs because they were so boring. Oh, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, please don't let the Spurs make the finals, and they would every time. Because, you know, the joke, of course, the big fundamental of Duncan, and he wasn't – he was just effective. But, you know, they're beating out those fun Mike D'Antoni – Suns teams that you wanted to see Amari Stoudemire and Steve Nash. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, oh, no, we get this instead of that. What happens next to Boston? Uh, they got decisions to make. Like, um, I just saw this earlier today. They got to make a decision, not on Tatum, on Jalen Brown? Jalen Brown. Yeah. If they want to retain him. <clears throat> uh, do they make a change of coach? I think is another big question. Did he save his job by forcing coming out of a three zero deficit and forcing a game seven, or was his fate already sealed? Yeah, that that's going to be. I mean, <clears throat> that one's going to be interesting. He got him to an Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, but I mean, me and you could have. Yeah. So I mean, we could have done that. He's kind of like, he's kind of like a spolstra. He's in a lot of the same situation right now. Right. I mean, given a team that's really, really good, that's what Spolstra had when he started with, with LeBron and the super team and all those. But now Spolstra is a, like we've said, pretty dang good court, uh, court coach and probably Hall of Fame worthy. So do you cut ties with this guy? I think you do that because before you break up the team. But even, as I say that, though, does it not feel like there's just something missing? <coughs> and just something missing with Boston's main guys? Are they too redundant? Are they too similar? Hmm. The way they play with Brown and Tatum. It's interesting. Or is it just one of those things that they're still so young? Brown's 26, Tatum 24. Is it just one of those things you have to work through it in order to – it's just, you know, I realize they took a step back as far as the level they made it to, you know, being in the NBA Finals last year, up 2-1 and then lose three straight to the, to the uh, Warriors. This year unable to make it to the NBA Finals. They've got Brown locked up for next year. At thirty million, but if obviously, you know, for guys like that, you want to keep them happy, and so I'm sure if they want to keep Jalen Brown around, they do that now. You know, mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing that. I have a hard time believing that Brad Stevens is going to break the team up. The core is young, still very young. Outside of Al Horford and, you know, Brogdon is 30, Horford's 36, everyone else is in their 20s of the guys that really contribute to this team. And, and a bunch of them are, like, around 25. And so, if I'm Brad Steven, Stevens, even if, let's say he doesn't feel comfortable with giving Jalen Brown an extension right now, he's still got to roll it. He's still got to run it back one more time, right? And kind of see how it's going next next year. I would think, but I, you know what else I would think? I would think Jalen Brown would be a really valuable trade piece if that's the way they wanted to go, because of his skill on both ends of the floor. You know, Scott on the text line, Brown to the Thunder, baby. That, that would be, I mean, but but like we mentioned this to Jim a couple weeks ago about how how good Jalen Brown would fit on the Thunder, and he said Jalen Brown fits everywhere. Yeah. And he does because of what the, because of the way he plays and, the, and there's willingness to defend. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what Boston does. At the end of the day, though, I think you hear a bunch of stuff, hear a bunch of – especially once you get draft time. Yeah. And nothing happens other than maybe a new head coach. And I'm not 100% convinced that's going to happen either. 
And I think you're you think they stick with him. I think your parallel to to Spolster is really interesting. It may be a test case for Brad Stevens to go. Well, look what just happened with Spo. Yeah. Everybody wanted him out ten games into the Heatles' first season, <laughs> you know, and especially. But it wasn't his fault. LeBron wouldn't play in in the Dallas series. What's he supposed to do? Go out there and whip him? You know, he can't make he can't force him to do what he's supposed to be doing. And then they kind of figured it out, and obviously the next year, and he was a completely different player in the finals against the Thunder than he was against Dallas. But I I think there's going to be tons and tons of smoke around what Boston might be doing. And at the end of the day, I don't think there's any fire. I think we see, you know, outside of maybe Horford, upgrade somewhere there. I think you see a lot of the same type of team, same type of pieces, same pieces that they had this year, and give it another run. Uh, because it it feels like Boston has built it right, doesn't it? I mean, they're of all the Eastern Conference teams, doesn't it feel like they're the one with the most staying power? Yep. And so maybe just keep on, just kind of keep on chipping away at it until finally the dam breaks and you you know you hoist the Larry O'Brien. So early, but, but I'm right. I, I'm I'm with you. I think keep an eye on any kind of rumors or anything going on in in Bean Town between now and the draft day. Yeah, I you know what I mean. I think it's there's gonna you're gonna hear there's some gonna stuff. be a lot of inquiries about Brown. I think so. And listen, you don't want to pay him. Let, we got this. Let's you know we want to pay him. You know, and that man that fits right into the Thunder's mold. They got all the it's just cap not, space, and, but and it's equity not their, to go that way. But it, I know it's saying. not their timeline. Yeah, it, that that go for it win now. Yeah, it's just not if if Chet would have played last year and looked like he was going to be worthy of the number two pick in the draft. <clears throat> with the way that Jalen Williams played, then all of a sudden, yeah, maybe that is it. But I just, I'm afraid, as far as the Thunder go, I think it's just a little bit too ambitious, too early. If this was two. If this was two summers from now, look out. I just don't think it fits the timeline for the Thunder. What and, if it is? Um, what about trade deadline next year? Well, when think once, about like that, like once where you the see, Thunder trajectory yeah. is compared to to the Celtics. And you know, what if the Celtics see some writing on the wall? And like, okay, we don't want to re-sign them. Let's trade them before the deadline. I know I'm looking. I'm putting the cart way ahead of the horse. Yeah, the one thing about it that I, I, I'm just I, basing this off of the history of Sam Presti, sure. what stuff he's done in the past. When it's a team that he feels like can contend, he makes those big moves at the trade deadline to try to get them over the hump. Yeah, Brown's very interesting for the future of a lot of franchises. Yeah, and especially what we don't know is how bad he wants to be there. Hmm. You know, it feels like anytime you hear trade deadline rumors with them or, or off-season rumors with them, he's always the one that's got to go because of Tatum. So what if he is completely dissatisfied with that and he walks in there this morning into – Brad Stevens' office said, "Yeah, you, uh, I'm not signing here after next year." Well, at that point, now you got to try to get something before you get nothing. Yeah, and lose him in free agency. That that becomes a that becomes a whole different ball of wax then. <clears throat> but if he wants to be there or doesn't mind, you know, whatever, I I, I just don't see it breaking up. But man, and I promise you, that gets out. <clears throat> and if that gets out, Boston's leverage goes to nada. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, the deal that anybody's got to make comes down. The quality of what they got to give. And that fits. Now all of a sudden you're in the Thunder wheelhouse because of all that they have. We'll be back. Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medications safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all of your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug. 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust the skinny on sport yeah! Come on, yeah! 
welcome back. It's Paul Jones Drug Tuesday right here on the Skinny on Sports. Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main, right here in Elk City. Paul Jones Drug is care you can trust. Rodney Skinner and the gang down at Paul Jones Drug. They are the oldest compounding pharmacy in Elk City. That means they've got the most experience. Uh, they offer free local delivery. You can drive through and pick it up. Curbside testing and vaccinations available, as well as what they call blister packs, which is your long-term care unit packaging. It's Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main, 225-2121 is their phone number. I'll give them a call. Go see Rodney and the gang at Paul Jones Drug. Man, what a weekend. You, you already referenced what happened in Norman in that game two of the Super Regional between the Sooners and Clemson. Uh, Oklahoma breaks the all-time record for consecutive wins of 48. Um, ah, I forgot to cue that up, uh, what you sent me. Oh. With the uh, the call from from uh, Chris Plank of Soonersports.com. I'll find it while you talk about it. But, man, um, you know, it was uh, a, a historic weekend, really, in a lot of ways in Norman. Not only uh, back to the College World Series, not only breaking the uh, the all-time wins, consecutive win streak, but then also uh, sending Marita Hines and Marita Hines Field out with a bang uh, there with the 2 nothing sweep over what, in my mind, was a vastly underseeded Clemson team that ought to be in Oklahoma City next week. Yeah, they were good. They were good. Uh, but OU was better. And it never felt like, even when we went down 7-4 to four late in that game, you just thought, man, it, they've done it so many times in their storied history, especially this year where it, they've, what, two or three times this year they did it against Texas, I believe. Uh, the, the Oklahoma come, State. The comeback against Oklahoma State. So you can't count them out. I mean, they just – if you if they have an at bat even with down three with two strikes on the board, there's still a chance for them to score and and and, and give themselves a chance. It's a, it's an amazing it's an amazing testament to what Coach Patty Gasso has built. You talk about mental toughness. I mean, how easy is it to fold it up and say, well, okay, let's just get to game three and and see what happens. Um, amazing, amazing atmosphere. There we go. Rito waits on deck. A disappointed Hanson takes a little walk. Behind on the count, no balls and two strikes. And here's the thing about this team, and here's the thing that Clemson also knows. As long as this offense has a strike, they're in a game. So Kenzie Hanson, again, just needs to show discipline in a pitcher's count. Here comes the 0-2. Lifted deep to left field. No way. No way. Are you kidding me, Kenzie Hanson? She tied the game. Yeah, Chris Plank there on the call, uh, Sooner Sports. And I, I thought, what a perfect time for whoever that the color analyst was to say the game isn't over as long as they have another strike. Yeah. And what's funny was I've seen so many videos of that home run. I, the Sooner softball Twitter, Facebook, they put out, hey, where'd you send us your videos? And so I'm just the other day just scrolling through and looking at all the different angles. What's funny is it, there's almost a subdued reaction from the crowd, like, okay, there's the home run. Yeah, we're tied. Game over, even though we're tied, because they knew. Now they're going to go and win the thing, and they did. It's it's That's how <laughs> spoiled, is that what I'm going to say here, <laughs> the OU crowd is, because winning so many games, so many national titles, in this case so many games in a row, it's like they they too knew, hey, if there's still a strike left, there's a chance they can tie this game up. And there it was. It's almost like like it was written. Like they already had the script before the, the movie was released. But, man, that's just awesome to step up like that and, and uh, get the win. And, um, you know, can't, can't overlook, though, what OSU did, too, this weekend. They no, no, no. No problem with Oregon. No, that was that was impressive. I'm just running right through Oregon at home. And so <clears throat> it Oklahoma's not struggle, but it was. I mean, winning that game was a struggle. Are the do the Sooners have just a little bit of vulnerability? 
I don't. To me, going into last year's tournament, zero. Like there was almost zero chance anybody else was going to win that than OU. Do you feel the same way right now? No, I, I, I felt like they've been. If we're going to start comparing this team to past Sooners team, past OU teams, yeah, I've always felt like this team was or has. I don't want to say flaws, cracks, vulnerability, sure. But because in the past, they've always had that dynamic. They had a Lauren Chamberlain. They had a Kalani Ricketts. They had Jocelyn Olive. They had that one player where everybody stopped what they were doing, watch them hit, because more likely than not, it's going to go over the fence. Can you? I mean, they. but up and down their lineup, they have solid hitters, but there isn't like that one player where you go, maybe, maybe Hanson, but you go, huh, this is one I'm going to stop and watch, right? But um, it seems like it's been more defensive uh, than offense this year with this OU team. But yeah, there. I mean, there are vulnerabilities there to them. But I keep going back to is like they don't know how to lose. There's that mental toughness thing. They don't. They, you can credit those players I talked about just now. Last year's team going in that 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 group just doesn't know how to lose. You know, it's not in their DNA. So. But yeah, there. This is a tournament where you know we mentioned OSU. You've mentioned it. They're not scared of OU. That was evident, even though they lost three to them. That's that they'd never. They had chances to win those games. Um, I think teams like Florida State, even though OU has seen them, right? Yeah. yeah Oklahoma's uh, seven and zero against the field. Yeah. Uh, Alabama. They haven't played Alabama. They haven't played Tennessee. Yeah. Well, those are all form. Those are all opponents that are teams that can win this thing. Yeah, I think it's but, a little different than last year. It's, I, But if you're asking me who a favorite is, I think it's OU, but it's not overwhelmingly favorite. They still got to come out and play very good softball this weekend. Very good. So I'm looking at this list, the longest winning streaks in Division One softball history. So you got the 47 from Arizona that was just broken. That was back in 96-97. You got a 38-game winning streak by South Carolina in 1997. Florida won 37 in a row in 2008. Princeton won 37 in a row in 1996. So it's four streaks of 37 or better. By the rest of the country, the other four on that list are all Oklahoma, all since 2020. They went 40 in a row from 20 to 21. They went 40 in a row over the 21-22 season. They went 41, I guess back to 19, I'm sorry, 41 in a row back in 2019, and then the 48 game they're on now. That is unbelievable. When you look at that list that goes clear back to 1996, and it's only happened four times since 96, and for Oklahoma it's happened four times since 2019. That's nuts. That's nuts what they've been. But I do. They went out here, what's it, 53, it'd be 53 in a row. And then think about starting next season. You know, you usually start with your cupcakes. Yeah, until they go out to the, some of those tournaments to right. get some better teams. But, but it could it could balloon. Yeah, it, maybe it can, sixty I mean, or so. So I'm going to ask: Is it breakable? I mean, every record's clearly breakable. But look at the Bud Wilkinson era. Thing. You look at how football is played. Now, it's those are you think man, record that streak will never be broken. It depends where it gets to. I mean, if it gets to 60 or something, it's hard to believe somebody can do that. But, And I mentioned Bud Wilkinson. You know, you, you say, oh, you, you know, Bud, Barry, and Bob. Is Gasso the best coach? Is she the most successful coach, regardless of sport, at OU? I think by the time she's done, that answer could be yes. I mean, it's different. It's totally different. But, I mean, she she's a little bit like Tom Brady over the last half decade of his career, six or six. You know, there's an argument to be made right now, but if she finishes off kind of the way Buff, adding ring over ring over ring here, then the it makes the conversation, and it makes a fun debate into into a laughable one. And she has that ability to do it with what's coming and it just doesn't seem like anything's 
standing in their way uh, to to derail it anyway. But I mean, why wait? Why wait? But that till doesn't she... mean. But that does not mean. And you want to make another burrito, bet? <laughs> Let me eat mine first. The one you're supposed to give me. Because I just have a fe- I have a feeling, Jared. I have a feeling about this. I think this is it. I think we're going to get Bedlam, and I think oh. Oklahoma State's going to win it. Oh wow! I do. I they. You know what Oklahoma State reminds me of right now? OU baseball a year ago. Yeah, I can see that. You know, started out good, then kind of floundered around, and you know, are they? Aren't they? And then all of a sudden in the playoffs, bam, they've went nuts. Get on a heater. Yeah. And I go back to that. They are not scared of Oklahoma. And that is that is way more than half the battle against OU. Like, give kudos to Clemson. Clemson was not scared either. Oh, no. I thought Clemson played fantastic. Well, they had a player of the year candidate on that team. And she was good. Yep. But who also gave up the three one bomb that we just heard? It was her. It was her. Yep. You know, and there's uh, I saw a stat over the weekend um, that Oklahoma has faced in this run the like three different pitcher of the year candidates or winners and they've just destroyed them compared to what their numbers were against everybody else it just wasn't even close and so that's i mean it's going to be a monumental task to take them down even though it does feel like they're they're not quite as invincible as they were a year ago you know florida state that i think the 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 toughest deal for osu is Right, first rattle out of first, the gate first is game. Florida State. Yeah, you know, if you're just a different seed, I if think that would help. You want to earn a burrito back? Go talk to Jimmy. He thinks Utah's going to get to the finals. He might take you up on a bet. He like, told me that last year yeah, or last week. Yeah, he might take you up on that. Anyway, just man, cool weekend for the state. <clears throat> and it could be a cool week coming up. Uh, you it know, could be this this the the finals could be. Uh, push way back because there's a lot of chances of rain. There is. Yeah, it could be clear into next week or further before we have a resolution to this, which would only build the hype, right? The two state teams could win a game or two. Look like we're going to be set up for a, uh, you know, for for something special. Uh, College baseball, Oklahoma State earns the 11th seed. They will be hosting a regional Stillwater uh, Oklahoma headed back to Virginia. It's amazing how many times they've gone to Virginia or Virginia Virginia Tech as it was last year. It seems like that's been a destination uh, for Oklahoma uh, when they have when they've had to go on the road. It's been there a whole bunch of different times with varying levels of success. And they've obviously last year to be Virginia in a super regional get to to get to to Omaha about ten or twelve years ago. Um, surprised that OU made it. No, but I thought the win over OSU in the Big Twelve tournament uh, tournament was kind of a deciding factor. See, uh, everything I had heard was that was a must win to get them in, and then when they won it, that's after that everyone said, "Okay, well they're they're probably going to get in as an at large." So I'm not really. I mean, and plus they they were playing some pretty good ball towards the end of the season, so they have a winning record. But um, no, I'm not surprised. I, I kind of expected that. It seemed like the RPI was strong. If you started looking at kind of the the analytics and the metrics of the season that OU had, even though the record is what 31 and 26, but their their strength of schedule uh, and a lot of it was being compared to Kansas State because of Big 12, because Kansas State swept Oklahoma. But when you actually kind of dug down outside of just the reaction to that. Oklahoma was better in every sense of it. Top 25 wins, I think it was 8-2 to two in favor of OU. Strength of schedule was like 5 in the country versus 60th. RPI, OU's RPI was way better. It seemed like RPI was a real determining factor in that uh, choice of Oklahoma. So you look, uh, the Sooners go on the road, play East Carolina in game one on Friday. Number seven seed, uh, Virginia, will take on Army. Then up at Stillwater. Starting on Friday, of course, like it's the subject to change with the the weather that could be there. But you got Washington and Dallas, Oklahoma State, and Oral Rock. Dallas Baptist team has beaten Oklahoma State. Uh, Not an easy regional. Now it's midweek, mid weekend starters. You know that's the thing. But yeah, I agree. It's not it's not an easy one 
for Oklahoma State. And you know who else I thought got a pretty tough just look at how the teams are playing right this second? For the number three seed in the tournament, <clears throat> sure seems like Arkansas got shipped a couple of really hot teams in Arizona and TCU. Obviously, T's tournament champ. So he's pretty tough uh, there for Arkansas. Just right out of the box. Yeah. Yeah, not too far. I mean, and back to the Stillwater Regional. I mean, yeah, and the, Oral Roberts. The, Oral Roberts not leaving state, coming over in, in Dallas Baptist, just coming up 35. I mean, I, I'd be a little – but you get the host, so – there was even question of, you know, one point, does OSU even deserve it? They get to host, and, and the, the obrate has been very nice to them since it's been built. So I don't doubt they'll get out of it. I mean, they got to – it's not they got to find some pitching. they, they got to play good. I mean, We know they can hit. they yeah. got to find some pitching. Uh, or Dallas Baptist speed. It's going to be interesting. interesting. Very, very interesting up there in Stillwater. The They ought to be able to move on. They should. They ought to be but able to do But they're getting teams that are coming in with high confidence. They've, they're, not, they're not. You talk about not being scared. That's right. They're not going to be scared of them. We'll be back in a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. The Skinny on Sports. Mock! Yeah! Ing! Yeah! I guess it'd be 40 and 120. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM. The Sports Animal. Hey, you know, talking. we were talking baseball off here, Major League Baseball. You're looking up who has, what's the record of losses, and, you know, obviously we're kind of all looking at 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 Oakland and Oakland's man. eleven and forty five. Yeah, they're on pace to really, but hey, um, I think it's it's I think what uh, the Las Vegas Knights have showed us is uh, if you come play in Vegas, you can turn it around. <laughs> yeah. You can play. You can win immediately. They're going to their second Stanley Cup in franchise history, Stanley Cup Finals. You seen the proposal for the uh, the stadium there for a baseball stadium, right, pretty much right on the Strip. Yeah, who knows? You build nice new things, people want to come play there. Or you go, hey, if we're going to build a stadium, let's go buy some players. Okay, so. What the Rangers have done. This happened on Friday. So on Friday, the A's lost their 42nd game. That was the most in MLB history before June 1. And since Friday, they've tacked on they've tacked on three more, and still have at least a two two days worth. Uh, yeah, do they play? When do they <laughs> that's play? what I was saying. Do they play today? Find out. Oak, oak, oak. You have to scroll way down the bottom of the. They screens. do. They've got Atlanta. Yo, that's a loss. So they could have two more losses. They could end up with forty seven losses before June first. Uh, just absolutely obliterating the old record of forty one. I think we're going to see the. We've got history in the making here. So, you know, they made the movie Moneyball, and it featured the the win streak that Oakland went on. Think they'll make a sequel with a losing streak? Maybe in a way. This, I most, mean, most you, losses. You know what this is? What's that? This has all the makings of Major League. It really does. I just don't see the turnaround. They're around. not turning it around, though. I don't see Jake Taylor behind the mound or the wild thing on the hill. No. I'm afraid. Or, or Serrano. Up Vegas there. bound. Nah. That's, uh, yeah. Send them to Vegas. Yeah, your Rangers are. Not feeling sorry for the Oakland fans. You know why? Because they don't go to the games. Wow, there was like 10 people That's in the ridiculous. stands. That's ridiculous. Anyone, anyone tries to pose that argument? Such a good fan base. We shouldn't take them out of the Oakland. Give me a pr- then go to the games. Go be a good fan. Root them on. They're not even showing up. Nobody's there. You know, and then they still check tickets. To, they still you see the ushers beeline into somebody to check their tickets, make sure they're in the right seats. What a joke. 
Yeah, Vegas. Get them in Vegas. Your Rangers leading the West. Best run differential in baseball. My Brewers are leading the Central, but they their run differential is a negative, even though they're three games above five hundred. That's not a that's doesn't seem like the greatest omen of all time. The I mean, after that amazing start by Tampa, and you look up and the Rangers are just two in the loss column behind them for the best record in baseball. Are you surprised? I mean, I think you yeah, thought they're going to be a little bit better, but this I is... thought they'd be better because they finally made some off season moves that. Instead of and I I I don't I'm not knocking their draft picks because I mean, obviously Josh Young is doing awesome over on third, uh, both hitting and defensively is great and you know then Degrom we'll see if, you know if he could stay healthy that was always the question but that to my point they they made moves you know Seager and Simeon Degrom they're making you know getting some established guys there and they have you know then got rid of Daniels. It's all pointing. I'm happy. I'm. I'm. I, yeah. I am surprised. I thought it'd take a little bit. I thought they'd be better, but uh, they're they're a lot better than I thought. But I'm. I told you all fair. I'm just. I'm still kind of cautiously optimistic, waiting for the wheels to fall off or something. But they've consistently won or over Houston by three games. Houston's always going to be hot on their tails the entire season, and that might be a good thing for them, knowing we can't let up because Houston's right there. Yeah, Houston's coming. Yeah, that's There's inevitable. There's no doubt about There's that. An, that's inevitable. They're going to be right there. I would love to know if you could get somebody, somebody to admit this, and by somebody I'm talking about DeGrom and John Gray and those guys. Well, I would love to know how much building Globe Life has changed the perception of pitching in Arlington. Because for, you know, the ballpark at Arlington was an awesome place. And it was also the hottest place on the face of the earth in July and August. I, I, I would love to know how much that has changed and strengthened the Rangers' ability to go out and actually get those things done well, in the offseason. That is kind of what I was saying about Vegas and building a stadium like that. People yeah. like nice new things, and they'd want to play at a yeah, place it, like that. Yeah, but but it's also but, but inside. It is inside, and it doesn't have to be. If it's a nice day, they'll open up the roof. And yeah, that it, as soon as they announced they were building that stadium, that's when I thought, okay, th- they're going to. As soon as that stadium's built, not as soon as it took mm-hmm. them a couple of years, they're going to aggressively go after big names, and they did. Yeah, on the pitching side. On the pitching side, yeah. You know, it was always a launching pad, and, and the Rangers from the mid '90s on always had offense, always. But it was hard to find pitching on the open market that would be willing to come, just because of how I mean, physically, that's it's hard to do in the dead heat of summer. Mm-hmm. And so now I think that uh, yeah, Scott's uh, you know it's more of a free agent destination. I think, especially with arms, than it ever was at the ballpark in Arlington. So I, I, you know, it seemed like what are they doing? That thing's barely 30 years old well, i'm 30 years old but i get it i, I get why it if happened. you weren't a rangers fan if you're just if you've never been to the ballpark in Arlington, um or globe life or whatever it is you didn't understand it you thought you because you're thinking man the thing was only built in 94 it's still new in, in terms of of stadiums what are they doing but if you're a rangers fan that have been to a few games you get it Oh, the first I one I went to was in the summer of 95, Cleveland, when they were headed to the World Series with Kenny Lofton and all those guys. And it was like July or early August, and at mid-afternoon, yeah. it was like you couldn't stand you, – you you literally couldn't be out in the sun. No, it was – yeah. It's, and I was a kid yeah. where it didn't bother you as much. Well, I went to a night game, and it was still so Oh, yeah, it would be that way for sure. We was, all know. it'd be. It's just like coming going to a game here. Well, sure, yeah. When it gets to July or August. Yeah. It's nice and sultry, but I think this is a... I think they're going to get a return in their investment. I do, too. Building that I stadium. I do, too. Uh, we're going to wrap up this Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Thank you to Rodney and the gang at Paul Jones Drug. Don't forget about convenience packaging. Convenience packaging takes away all the trouble with your medicines. Instead of filling up your pill caddy, they do it for you, essentially. You just open them up, take the pills, throw it, the, the package in the trash, and move on to the next day. Also got the durable medical equipment. Most insurances are accepted, and 
It's not just the medical stuff. They've got great gifts and greeting cards as well. 809 North Main, that's Paul Jones Drug. Tomorrow, Jared. I want to get into this uh, reports from over the weekend about SEC football schedule. <coughs> okay. It feels like it could be to only an eight-game conference of nine. Hmm. I want to get into that discussion. Cool. And what that means. Will it actually happen, or is this just a ploy to get more cashola out of ESPN? Yeah. We can talk about yeah, that. We'll talk about it. Kind of get closer to previewing the NBA Finals. Who knows? Who knows what else will pop up? That's kind of my plan for tomorrow. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great um, Tuesday. Ha-ha. Ha-ha. Skinny on Sports, right here on the Sports Animal. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way. Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medications safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all of your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust.